Good morning and welcome to this morning's virtual bridge session. Um, we are joined this morning by uh, David Greer from Southeastern Regional College. Um, David is uh, the Library Resources Manager uh, in Southeastern Regional College based in Northern Ireland. And uh, he's going to talk to us this morning about uh, engaging students and, and teaching staff with ebooks. Um, the college, Southeastern Regional College, have always consistently been at the top of um, JISC's ebooks for FE rankings. So uh, David's going to share some of those uh, uh, tricks and tips that he, he has in place to, to keep the, uh, the rankings up there. And uh, so over to you, David. All right. Okay, uh, well, we've, we've quite a small audience today, but I uh, know we're, we're recording this, so uh, maybe people will, will look at this in, in a, a week or two's time when the half time half term's over. Well, firstly, I just want to start off, uh, as Hazel said, I work for the South Eastern Regional College. Um, I run the uh, libraries and resource centres at, uh, uh, at our four campuses. And I just want to start off a wee bit about me. Um, first off, I'm not a librarian. Um, I manage resources uh, and people who happen to be librarians and library assistants. I've been incredibly lucky. I've had a very, very varied career within education. I started in a trading organization and I'm old enough to remember YTPs, job skills. And I moved to uh, colleges, uh, to run the college's online learning uh, through Learn Direct, if anybody remembers Learn Direct. Uh, and later uh, asked to run a number of economic development programs for the business unit. Um, I also taught for five years, I uh, taught IT uh, for the college. I subsequently uh, moved to manage the, uh, the library's e-resources. So why have I given you a short career summary? Well, it was not until I was asked to manage the uh, e-resources that I saw real, any real re relevance to me in regards to what the LRC were doing. And I think this is a common problem for most LRCs in, in colleges, being relevant to staff and students. So I understand the problem of being a small voice in a large organization. What we really came to talk about today was uh, promotion of, of eBooks and uh, how we're doing it in CERC. Now, probably a lot of what I'm gonna talk about today, you're already doing it, um, or you've already tried it and it hasn't worked. But I just want to go through what we've done uh, what we've worked and, and, and our insight into it. We've been incredibly successful in promoting ebooks uh, with, within uh, the college. Uh, last uh, academic year, we had 150, over 150,000 uh, clicks on our ebooks. It was a rise of 57% in the previous academic year. In fact, we've had a rise uh, of usage every year since we started using ProQuest ebook central 10 years ago. Um, I, this is actually quite short. There's, there's no PowerPoint. Uh, we will have maybe have a look at our interface uh, at the end of, of the session. Um, I only have 10 points that I want to, to run through, and they're under four sections. And the sections are infrastructure, uh, our buying policy, uh, promotion of ebooks, and the most crucial one of all, tutor buy-in and creating that culture. Well, first, we just want to talk about the, the infrastructure that we have. We only have one platform for eBooks. Um, we don't buy from any other company other than ProQuest. And the reason for that is simply the platform. Um, we can't afford a discovery service, uh, something like EBSCO would, would, would offer. It would take up about a third of our budget. Um, so we want to make it as simple as possible, as easy to find uh, our eBooks uh, as possible. So there's no confusion over access. No confusion over multiple types of licenses, or you can do this in this particular platform, but you can't do it in this particular platform. So we stick to one platform, and that has been a very deliberate decision. Um, we have a very robust uh, website, uh, which, which is probably very common now, but maybe wasn't as common 10 years ago. Uh, our ebooks and e resources are available off campus, obviously, 24 7 through our web uh, portal. Um, it is very rare for it to be unavailable or offline. Uh, as you know, hard copies of books are only available nine to five. Um, they can be lost, damaged. They can go overdue for extensive periods of time. This doesn't happen to eBooks, and this makes our eBooks very attractive. 
Um, we also have a very simple design of our website. Um, when, I, when I took over the post some years ago, um, we had multiple sources of information, uh, multiple resources. But the problem with that was what you were looking for was being lost in the forest of resources. And without a discovery system, it was very hard to actually find what you, you wanted. So I ended up getting rid of about 75% of our e-resources. And we only take the e-resources that we can prove that are being used. And how we do that is we look at the stats. Um, if a e new e-resource that we are considering uh, does not have stats or, or, or a way of getting stats, it's very likely but we will not be purchasing that. Um, so uh, we cut down uh, the, the, a massive number of e-resources. We made the design of the website as simple as possible, as, as less clicks as possible. And we make all our e-resources and e-books available from one single page. And maybe a good time to, to uh, show you that later on. Our buying policy, again, is very deliberate. Um, if key texts are available from e-book central ProQuest, we don't buy paper copies. We simply don't um, because we, ha we have the resources we need. Um, and they're in one central place. Um, we have four campuses, so it's not a case of, well, that book is, is uh, needed in our Bangor campus, but it's only available in our Downpatrick campus. Um, if it's on eBook Central, it's available to everybody at all times. So our policy is that if, if the book is available as an eBook and if it's available from ProQuest, then we buy it. We don't buy the paper copy. Um, we have tried many, many different ways of uh, promoting uh, eBooks. And, and what, I, what I will say is you just need to keep chipping away. Um, what I just want to, to highlight um, three or four um, that, that we've used and, and, and how we've done them. Uh, probably the, the main way uh, to promote uh, is through your VLE. Um, we use Moodle. Um, it is the main way that students access e-resources. Um, there are far, far more students going into their personal um, college um, Moodle page for their course than are coming to our little bit of the intranet, the circuit bit of the intranet, the, the LRC part of the intranet. Um, because I've seen the figure, I know that. So we um, create links to our ebooks, and I mean individual links to individual books. We create those and we pass those on to the lecturing staff. They then embed that into Moodle. Um, over lockdown, we created um, 1,130 ebook links um, and we sorted them, those into 130 um, different courses uh, that CERC run. So we covered near and up every course. We created those links and those links have now provide, been provided uh, to the, the individual uh, teaching staff. So they can put that onto Moodle. So students don't even need to come near the LRC pages to access eBooks. So we're trying to make it as simple as possible for them to get the information that they need. Um, the next point I want to make is about e-resource e subject talks. Now, I'm, I'm sure um, every LRC or every library uh, within FE and HE will do these talks. And you'll do it in different ways. We do ours in October, November. And we, we do refresher ones, refresher ones in January, February. We roughly do about a we do about a hundred talks per year, roughly, um, which sound, sounds quite a lot, but we, we probably run about four hundred courses, so it's only, we're only hitting about twenty five percent. However, all the LRC staff are involved, so all the LRC staff feel comfortable using and demoing ebooks. They know the ebooks inside out because they need to, to dem demonstrate them. So they're comfortable using them. They can see how useful they are. Um, we do the resource, well, previous to the pandemic, we did the resource talks and ebook talks in the classroom, deliberately outside of the LRC so that uh, the students could see, well, ebooks, well, you don't need to go to the LRC for that. You can do this from anywhere. You can do this from home. You can do this on your phone or on your tablet, on the train. You can do it from anywhere you can get internet access. So we deliberately don't do the talks in the LRC. Uh, and, and we, we find that, that very, very useful. Um, 
when a student is in the LRC, we, we take as, as much as many opportunities as we can to do one-to-ones. So, for example, if a student asks for a book, the staff will go, oh, that book, I think we have that as an e-book. You know, do you know about e-books? You know, would you like to know about e-books? And if a staff member has, has time, they will then give them a mini demo of, of how to use e-books. And even if we don't have that book as an e-book, then, oh, we have other books on this subject and there are e-books. Would you like to, to know about e-books? We take absolutely every opportunity to promote e-books. One thing I'll tell you definitely doesn't work. Um, emails don't work. Students don't read them. <laughs> Staff don't read them. Um, I try and read them. I don't always read them. Uh, so we've had to think of different ways of promotion. One thing we did a few years ago was we created uh, QR code posters. And it was very simple. It was just with a, a, a message saying, uh, keep calm and use the LRC. And we embedded the QR code in, into it, which took them to then a, a video describing our e-resources and our e-books. We put those in every single notice board we could find at the four campuses. Um, now, uh, I'm sure people will wonder, well, what was your uptake in that? You know, how, how can you prove that it actually worked? Well, I can't because uh, we, weren't, we couldn't find a way of uh, working out how many people uh, access the uh, video from the QR code. But what I did do, every time I had an inspector in or uh, somebody who was validating uh, a, a course and come down to see uh, the, the, the library resources, I made sure that poster was behind me. So when they did come to the, the bit where they would ask you, oh, what's all the different ways that you can provide information for uh, staff and students? You know, I just pointed to the poster and said, well, that, that's one of the ways there we use ebooks, you know, and there's a promotional video on that. And if you use your phone now, you can actually go and see the promotional video. So say, I don't know if that was totally successful, but it's just something we try. Um, another thing with, uh, I, I know has been a success, um, we have control, obviously, of the PCs in the LRCs. Uh, we don't have control over them in the classrooms. We do in, in the PC, uh, sorry, in the, in the LRCs. Um, the, uh, each, P, each PC has a pop-up screen. Um, so when a student first logs on to uh, an LRC PC, uh, a pop-up screen appears and says and starts talking about ebooks and with a link to our ebooks. So the first thing they see when they come into the LRC is an advert about ebooks, and they have to actually close it before they can move on to do something else. So whether they're into the, uh, the LRC to use ebooks or not, they see that every single time. Uh, it works better than uh, putting posters around the room um, because it's right in front of them. You know, it's right in front of them. Um, one of the things we tried um, and we're developing at the moment, uh, we tried during lockdown, we, we were trying to think of different ways of um, uh, different ways of engaging with students remotely. We, we developed uh, an LRC e-magazine, um, which we were going to do every month and then realised how much work was going to be uh, involved uh, and we're now doing every term. Um, it's very simple, it's, it's, it's one page and it, it will have a theme. Um, uh, uh, each time we do it. So this term's theme is the LRCs and COVID. What are we doing? So, uh, for example, uh, we're not allowing, not allowing uh, students to, to browse the books. Uh, we're, we're keeping them roped off. They can request them from the catalogue or from their SUTS, but not to browse them. Um, you must put into the LRCs now uh, to, to get your place we, uh, because uh, we're not sure of, of the numbers coming in. Uh, and we have to reduce the numbers. We were encouraging people to book before they come in. Um, but one of, the, one of the things we, we always do is we always put a, a, a little section about eBooks um, and, and the, our promotional video of how to use eBooks. Um, uh, it, it goes in each one. And the, the other thing we do is we have a reading for pleasure book uh, for each issue um, because our, our eBook uh, library is simply textbooks. You know, um, we, we don't have a reading for pleasure uh, section, but we're now trying to build one. Um, so we, we have one for, for each uh, uh, magazine issue. And this, this is recommended by staff or students, and they need then to write a little blurb of why they liked it and, and, and why they recommend it to uh, other people. 
uh, the, we are planning to have an e-magazine published um, uh, just after half term, and the, the book is uh, Woodlanders, uh, which is uh, was recommended by uh, one of our staff. Uh, and so we we have a little blurb there saying, you know, what's your favourite book? You know, would you like us to buy it? And, and you can share that with, with other people as well. Uh, and then that also drive it drives traffic to the ebook site. You know, so they, they maybe won't go looking for the Woodlanders, but then they go, oh, hold on, there, there's health and childcare books here. I'll have a look at them as well. So um, what I'm really saying is. Try everything, you know. Just just keep plugging away, um, and and some ideas will work, some ideas weren't. What really definitely works is tutor buy-in, building a culture of engagement. This is absolutely crucial. Again, we e we uh, um, promote eBooks at every opportunity. Um, that includes our call, our annual call. For book suggestions, um, you know, uh, that's usually April, May. We will ask uh, tutors, "What do you need for next year?" You know, at that point, I get to engage with tutors um, and say, "Well, that's actually available as an ebook. We're going to get that as an ebook for you." You know, um, there's a, a, a similar call in, in September for all those tutors who forgot to uh, put in their book list in April, May, uh, and again, we get that uh, opportunity to speak to them. Um, I'm not sure what it's like for other colleges, but certainly uh, I think for Northern Irish colleges, um, we would have certain reading weeks. Uh, in CERC, our, our reading week is, is usually um, in February. Now, the reading weeks are good because um, this is also the time that whole schools come together. So the health and social, uh, uh, health and social care will come together, the sport will come together, management will come together. And the tutors will come together and do a little bit of uh, staff development during that week at some stage. This is a brilliant opportunity to get an entire school, uh, uh, the whole business development or business management in one room, 15 minutes, let me show you eBooks. Let me see the, show you the functionality of eBooks. And this is what really works with tutors when you show them the functionality. The fact that you can um, put a bookmark in, you, you can put notes into ebooks and, and to highlight, but the most important of all, when you copy from an ebook uh, into, say, a Word document, that it pulls that citation across with it. Um, that's the light bulb moment. That's when they realize, hold on, I've been drumming in citations to these people and they're not getting it. You know, they must cite. Um, so the citation will come across. Yes, it's not in Harvard. And we use Harvard. Um, it, it, I think it's an uh, MBR or something. I'm, I'm not sure, but it's an, it's an American one. But it has everything that you need uh, to put together for Harvard, apart from a, a couple of tweaks. You know. And the other important thing is, is when it pulls that bit of text across and the citation below it, um, it reminds the student that they must cite that. Okay. So that's when I see the uh, tutor going, Hold on, this is relevant to me. You know, um, you know, maybe I, I should be getting my student to use this. Okay. Um, validation and revalidation is another opportunity. You'll get um, tutors who are then required to come and see you with their, their book list because they want their course validated or revalidated. And you're the gateway to that on the resource side. So that's another opportunity to talk to them with the ebooks. Okay, you've got a lot of books here. Um, I can get that, that, and that as an ebook. Okay, and and uh, and by the way, we're not going to buy the paper copy. We're buying it as an ebook. So that's another opportunity to talk with ebooks. Um, one thing I tried a couple of years ago, which was really really successful, was I realised that I had the saturation point. Um, I had persuaded um, a good lot of the tutors that ebooks were a good idea, and uh, I was pushing an open door with them. I didn't need to hit them anymore. Um, uh, it was working on some, uh, and they were now saying, David, I don't need you to come to my class uh, to talk about e resources. I'll do it. I'll talk to them about e books. I know it. I've got it. You don't need to come. I'll do that for you. That's great. Um, there's, there's other tutors who you'll never persuade. They, they, they are entrenched in their teaching uh, methods. It happens in every college, um, and you will never change them. The ones that you have an opportunity to change are the new tutors. So I went to HR and said, listen, 
Can you give me the surrogate email addresses of anybody who started teaching in the college in the last two years and tell me what they're teaching? Which they did. Um, so, I mean, it was a surrogate email to surrogate email, so uh, you know, it, it was fine. Um, I wrote them individual uh, emails saying, Dear Javon, dear Peter, you know, I, I believe you've recently um, started with the college or started with the college the last couple of years. I believe you teach health and social care, or I believe you teach business management. Um, would you like me to talk to you about e-resources and e-books? I've sat down and I, I'll show you the resources we have. The take up was uh, about 80%. It was very high. New tutors are desperate for sources of information. They're enthusiastic. They're sponges. They, they, will, they will take on, it's a generalization, I know, but they'll, they'll take on as much help as they possibly can. Um, so it's a very good way of, of, of getting people right at the start and interested in ebooks. And I say, when you show them the functionality of the ebooks, um, usually you, you've won the argument or how easy it is to access what you can do in an ebook. Uh, and the availability of ebooks through the Progress system. That the, the, the difficulty is getting that opportunity to demonstrate. Once you've demoed it, usually you have won uh, that argument. We've become that successful that in certain schools, they, they now use ebooks as part of their, their teaching, um, as part of the day's teaching. So uh, I know our carpentry courses. Are using uh, ebooks in class, and so are the, the BTEC business courses. I suspect there's probably many more that I'm not aware of that are using them in class as well. Actually, nothing wrong with that as long as it's part of uh, the license. Um, but that is driving traffic as well. Um, some courses, and I would say, um, health and social care and nursing, they now only use ebooks. They they don't have uh, uh, books on their reading list, which are hard copies. And that's because um, I, I, I managed to have some, some very good conversations with uh, uh, the course director, uh, uh, who, who was fully on board, uh, showed him what we had existing, gave him an opportunity, well, what would you like to, to enhance our, our, our provision of the books for your particular um, subject area? Came back, I was able to get what he needed. He said, right, that's it, ebooks only. It, it just makes sense to us. And I went, yeah, great. So we already have one particular school for ebooks only. Um, finally, just to end on this one, um, I, I'm not sure what it's like in Scotland, but uh, in Northern Ireland, it, it's the uh, education training inspector. It's probably the same in, in, in Scotland as well. Uh, so you'll have their reports, and you have uh, intern, internal, internal verifier reports, external verifier reports. There's a little section in all of those reports where it is encouraging tutors to use multiple sources of, of, of information that students should use. Ebooks are another source. Ebooks, you have to research ebooks because you, you have to put in a, uh, a title of a book or a keyword or, or a, an author's name. That, that's, re, that's research. So that is another source uh, that students are using uh, when they're doing their assignments. That takes a box from inspectors. So that, that's, um, uh, you're again winning the argument there that here's another source for you okay um and really uh, if i could emphasize this if you want to promote promote ebooks and that's if, that's if you want to promote ebooks it has to start with you you have to have the passion for it you you need to have been sold on it you need to see the uh, the benefit of this um, and then if you're in that position, you need to share that benefit with your staff, uh, if it's the LRC. Um, and then from there, that, that, that passion needs to go out to, to the teaching staff, because your teaching staff are the, are the conduit. They're, they're your gatekeepers. If you, if you win over the teaching staff, your ebooks are going to be heavily used. And to, to quote Eddie Hearn, boxing promoter, no passion, no point. No, so, I was asked also to show our, our portal, and uh, I'll, I'll see if I can do that now. Let's see if we can bring that up.
Okay, that's uh, that's our ebook central uh, portal there. Um, but I think I want to move back to this here. This is this is our uh, LRC pages. As you can see, you can move uh, to the e resources quite quickly from there. There's our ebooks. We're actually on the ebook page. You can launch ebooks from here. Um, I have done a little video here, which goes through highlighting um, bookmarking the bookshelf, which I didn't mention earlier, uh, notes, and, and uh, crucially, citation. Um, so, as I say, I, I would do quite a lot of uh, ebook talks, and then I would, I would just refer them back to the video and say, listen, that, guys, that's, that's what I've covered. Um, I'm going to stop there, and I, I know we have quite a short, or quite a small audience today, um, but I'll, I'll invite any, any questions for those who, who are here. Hi there, David. Thanks very much for that. I found that Stop. very. Oh. Hi there. Uh, thanks very much for that. I found it very interesting. I just find that I'm trying to uh, get my head around the uptake of it. Is that down to the personality of the tutor or the subject that the tutor's teaching? What one has more of a weight in terms of who's likely to take it up? Your first protocol has to be the tutor. Okay, so if a tutor is not interested, you're not going to get in there, you know. Now, for certain subject areas, um, especially health and social care, business management, there's a wealth of material out there, both um, within the, the JISC free offering, which is absolutely superb, by the way, um, and also within the, the, the greater uh, ProQuest catalog. But, you know, I, I gave an example there quite deliberately of, of carpentry. You think, oh, oh, why are the carpenters using e-books? That's a practical subject. Yeah, I was surprised as well. Um, <laughs> um, the particular carpentry book um, that, that they want to, to access only came as a single, at, at that time it's changed now, only came as a single user license. And I, I was so impressed by how happily they wanted to use it. I, I bought multiple licenses so they could use it in the classroom. And they've embedded that now into their program. That um, this, this is one of their, their teaching methods. So absolutely crucial that the tutor's on board because if the tutor's not on board, it doesn't matter how many great eBooks you have, it doesn't matter how brilliant the system is, they won't use it. You know, they'll, they'll stick to their own teaching methods. And to be honest with you, I don't have a massive problem with that. You know, I mean, if, 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 they're, if, if they are fine with what they're using, great. If we can provide them with another opportunity, even better. You know, um, subject areas. There are certain subject areas um, that there, 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 there's a mass of both free JISC uh, ebooks uh, and uh, books available through the ProQuest uh, library. But uh, well, thanks for your question. That was a good one. Thanks, um, I, I have another question, David. Um, You'd mentioned in the uh, designing of the, the website that you cut the number of e-resources by 75% and you're only using, you only took forward the, the resources that you could prove that were actually being used. Yeah. Um, how, how did you demonstrate this? I mean, was this through reports? And, and if so, uh, how much detail was in those reports? Yeah, um, this, this is a problem because, um, as I said, I'm only really interested now in e-resources that can provide you the stats. But, uh, and I know there's JUSP, which, which is great. Um, but a, a lot of the resources uh, that we use and, and have been using previously, report it in different ways. Um, so it was difficult to uh, compare like for like. Um, really the, the resource had to get over the first hurdle, which was, can you give me any type of stats? You know, if they can't, you know, that, that's, that's a real warning sign for me. Um, I, I've, I've been doing this for quite some time. So now what we do is we compare like for like, not on different e-resources, but on different years. So um, if we have a, a resource for four or five years, I can look back four or five year stats. And if they suddenly drop, and I've actually noticed one um, uh, yesterday where it does look we've fallen off the edge. On, on this one, um, I'm going to have to review that particular e-resource and see, hold on, are the class that I thought were using it, not using it anymore? So it will need further investigation. 
So to answer your question, uh, really, Hazel, it, it, it depends, which is not a really good answer, but it, it is crucial we do get, get stats. And unfortunately, um, all of them what Josh is doing. There isn't sort of a, a, a regulatory uh, way of, of uh, these e-resources um, uh, reporting back. So it, 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 a lot of it is down to judgment. Um, okay. Now there is a, there's a caveat there as well. There, there may be a, a, an e-resource that is uh, required by an awarding body. Um, it would be very rare if that was the case and they couldn't provide stats, but I may, I may be required to, to keep a particular e-resource because it's needed yes. uh, to run that course. I mean, it, it's a condition uh, by the awarding body to run that course. So that, that would be the caveat on that. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Right, we're um, half half an hour in, so I think uh, for the purpose of the recording, we'll uh, maybe stop the recording there. Um, thank you very much, David, uh, for your, that very insightful session there this morning. And uh, I think we'll hit the button.